These are 10 functions which serve as really important warning signs for every single calculus student, beginning with the absolute value function. Graphically, in the first quadrant, we would have the shape of y equals to x, and in the second quadrant, we would have the shape of y equals to negative of x. This creates a V-shaped graph that is continuous. If we zoom in, we would obtain a straight line. This means that this function is differentiable on all non-zero inputs. However, when the input is zero, no matter how much we try to zoom in, we would never get a straight line. This means that the absolute value function is not differentiable at the input zero, which warns us from thinking that a function being continuous means that it is differentiable. We can consider this rather strange x squared times sine of 1 over x when the input is non-zero and zero when the input is zero. It would wiggle really violently near the origin. When we zoom in on each point on the graph, we are essentially getting a straight line every time. This means that the function is differentiable at non-zero inputs. Furthermore, because this function is enveloped between two curves, as we zoom in on the input at the origin, we also obtain a straight line. However, a little bit of calculus would show that the derivative of this function is not continuous at zero. This warns us that a function being differentiable does not imply that its derivative is continuous. This leads us to an even crazier function known as the Weierstrass function. The function, though complicated, simply refers to a cosine wave getting more cosine-y or more jagged. The Weierstrass function is the final product as we take finer and finer jaggedness. We can actually draw this curve without lifting up our pen. In other words, this function is continuous. However, it is also pretty evident that no matter how far we zoom in, this does not look like a straight line at all. In this case, it's actually nowhere differentiable. Yet another famous jagged function is known as the Cantor function. Once again, the definition looks rather complicated, but essentially we are taking this particular straight line and making it more jagged bit by bit. The Cantor function is the final curve if we do this an infinite amount of times. This is also nicknamed the Devil's Staircase because the point slowly increases from 0 all the way to 1 continuously. However, in the graph of the perfect Cantor function, the gradient at almost every point on this graph is 0. Among other issues with this function, this tells us that just because a function has zero derivative on most of its points, it does not at all mean that the function is a constant. On the other hand, we have functions that are really really nice and really really smooth, such as this particular exponential function. The definition is rather strange, but roughly speaking, it flattens out near the origin. If we visually look at the gradient of the point at the origin, we're going to see that it's really, really flat. In fact, all of its derivatives at the origin are zero. But rather surprisingly, this function cannot be approximated by a polynomial. Just because we can differentiate it an infinite number of times, that does not mean that the function has a Taylor series. Instead of looking at derivatives, let's consider integrals. The Dirichlet function is defined to equal 1 when the input is a fraction and 0 when the input is not a fraction. Its graph is going to be really really pokey and really really strange, but it's going to always be bounded between 0 and 1. However, using our traditional ideas of areas and integration, this function does not have an integral. In other words, just because the function is relatively bounded, that does not at all mean that the function has a Riemann integral. But if we were to vary the Dirichlet function by a bit, we are going to obtain the Tomei function, which is defined to be a relatively small fraction if the input itself is a fraction, and 0 if the input is not a fraction. 
This is sometimes also known as the popcorn function. Just like before, this function is bounded and it looks really badly behaved. But surprisingly, this function has a Riemann integral. And at the same time, this function is discontinuous whenever the input is a fraction. This tells us that just because a function has a Riemann integral, that does not at all mean that the function is continuous. On the topic of area, can we use a one-dimensional line to cover all of two-dimensional space? The Hilbert curve is defined as follows. We start from this particular curve, wiggle it a bit, a bit more, a bit more, and so on and so forth. The Hilbert curve is the result of doing this process after an infinite number of times. This function is continuous, its inputs are one-dimensional, but its outputs are two-dimensional. This tells us that we can in fact use one continuous line to cover two-dimensional space. We can actually hit every single one of the points in two-dimensional space. A similarly paradoxical question we can ask would be, is there an object with finite volume and infinite surface area? This is called Gabriel's horn by taking the function y equals to 1 over x and revolving that about the x-axis. The resulting object has finite volume and yet has infinite surface area using a little bit of calculus. This means that just because an object has finite volume, that does not at all mean that it has a finite surface area. And in topology, which in a sense generalizes calculus, we have the topologist sine curve, which is defined to be the function sine of 1 over x when x is non-negative. The shape is really, really, really wiggly, and the curve is this idea called the closure of the graph. That's not too important for now. It turns out that this curve is connected, and yet there could be two points where you can't actually draw a connected curve between them. This means that this curve is connected but not path connected. In other words, just because some kind of topological space is connected, that does not at all mean that it is path connected. Connectedness actually underlies the most underrated theorem of calculus, which you can check out in the video here.